Welcome everyone to the Five Senses Podcast. I'm Robert Zinni. Tonight we have a special episode due to the coronavirus. We have Stephen Everett from the Yavapai Health Department mm-hmm. here. And we have Jerry Garvey from Northland Cares. Thank you both for coming on short notice. Oh, our pleasure. pleasure. Okay. Uh, so the coronavirus. Yes. Right? It's made headway throughout all of the world. All right. So, Stephen, uh, I've, I know that you are kind of like a detective of um, pandemics. Um, so mm-hmm. can you give us just a little bit of background about yourself and then go into how could a virus like this start? Okay, well, um, I'm employed as an epidemiologist, so we're okay. kind of a cross between a disease detective and a disease accountant. Okay, okay. We, that's pretty We try cool. to find uh, who gets sick and then determine where they got sick and who they may have infected. Okay. And then we track those numbers and report them to CDC. Um, but regarding where the coronavirus came from, it came from China. I'm not exactly sure exactly how it made the jump to humans. Okay. Uh, they're thinking it came from either bats or an animal called a pangolin, which is kind of an am- armored anteater. Uh, so, but whatever, wherever it came from, it jumped over into humans. It circulated a little bit in the market, and that's how they were determined. That's how it got there. And then from there in Wuhan City, it just exploded out. Right. And, you know, I guess with globalization, it went from China to Europe, now to America, and I bet you it's all over the world um, now, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, Wuhan City was probably not the best place to have it. They're considered the Chicago of uh, China. Okay. They're a major transportation hub. So that's easy way to get out. Okay. So uh, with the gravity of this whole situation, uh, what has the county... Uh, seen so far with regards to the coronavirus? Okay, well, we've been lucky so far. Uh, okay. It's, uh, let's say, Monday, <laughs> Monday, Monday the 16th, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we haven't seen any cases yet. I'm just putting the date because it can change any day now. Um, we have seen 18 cases in Arizona. Okay. Um, a few of them just got reported today, but they've all been south Maricopa, Pima, Pinal, and Graham County. Okay. Oh. So, so far, we've been lucky. Okay, cool. So it's great that we've been lucky. Yes. Um, what has the county been doing to try to do some precautionary um, efforts? Because uh, I would imagine that at some point it's going to reach Yavapai yeah, County. Yeah, it's all but inevitable that we'll, okay. we'll see it. So we're taking this time to really prepare uh, people. We're uh, doing a lot of outreach. <laughs> um, so we're really pushing the message of you know, practice really good hygiene and social distancing. Those okay. are the keys to keep yourself healthy. Okay. And why is social distancing um, super important for this type of virus? It's a respiratory virus okay. and it's uh, spread by droplets. Uh, it doesn't It doesn't stay airborne like something like measles does, where it will float in the air for hours. It tends to go out about six feet and then slowly settle to the ground. So when people sneeze, if people have seen that picture of the person sneezing and all the stuff that goes out, it usually goes out about six feet. Okay. So you want to stay at least six feet away from people. Okay, and so does this virus stay on, on the surfaces of, like, let's say, counters? Yes, or, okay. yes, it does. Um, it can, they think it may stay on a countertop or a hard surface up to eight days. Oh, okay, that's a long so, time. So, yeah, so being uh, disinfecting surfaces uh, and handles, any type, anything that people touch regularly, you want to disinfect. Okay, okay, good advice. Uh, so, Jerry, you are here from Northland Cares. I am. Uh, can you just speak a little bit about your organization and then go into what you, your organization has been doing uh, for the virus? Sure. Um, Northland Care is a specialty clinic for uh, people that have the virus. Um, we have a clinic, and then we have a lot of uh, supportive services that go along with that to help people be able to access care, afford care, um, <clears throat> and help them in times of need. Um, well, what we're, and just to let you know, with all our population that we see, um, and it is primarily funded by Ryan White, the uh, federal funding that goes mm-hmm. through our state, um, that we have right now um, 87% of our patients are what we call undetectable. Okay. Um, you cannot detect the virus any, any longer in their bloodstream, and they are not contagious. Um, so centers like ours have been able to uh, really help contain 
the HIV virus. Nice. And, you know, just to let you know, our, uh, you know, people that are positive live through a lot of stigma and a lot of discrimination. And I think the biggest uh, concern right now with our population um, who are very compassionate about this um, is that people are going to make assumptions um, and also put pig people and stigmatize people. And it's already been seen, especially with Asian people, because yep. in fact, um, they believe the virus started in Asia. But in fact, this virus is a form of SARS. And um, we knew for years that it was going, SARS was going to morph one way or another. Okay. Um, so where it popped up, anybody could could it, it could have done, been anywhere. So to blame Asian people is just ridiculous. Um, and, you know, for people that are positive, that's kind of triggering them because they remember the horrors they went through at one time. Mm -hmm. So um, compassion and understanding um, and also funding and, um, and bringing the community together to actually help contain this virus like we have HIV. Right. So from my understanding, Northland Cares uh, does test. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, um, the CDC has sent out a message to all healthcare providers, not just clinics like ours, um, that they are the front lines. If they have a, a patient that uh, presents to them and they feel that they have the symptoms um, we uh, have access to tests through now uh, private labs. Okay. And uh, we call the labs, they send over the tests. Um, we test these people. And, you know, I, I think that uh, really your healthcare providers are your frontline people. Okay. So, um, and any doctor can do that. However, when you call uh, and you're sick and the symptoms don't fit, this virus. There's no sign. People actually think, uh, you know, a stomach ache is the flu. So <laughs> we're trying to get across to them that it's, it's respiratory, uh, cough, you know, difficulty taking a deep breath and holding it, um, fever, fever is like a big one. Um, if you don't have those symptoms and you're sick, we're trying to, uh, you know, support them into staying contained because now they're more susceptible because they're sick, and waiting it out, of course, with uh, plenty of fluids, rest, mm -hmm. um, and see what happens. So if they um, continue with the symptoms, uh, it depends on severity, because if there's shortness of breath, then they should go right to the emergency room, because okay. then the pr virus has progressed to the point where if they go to the hospital, they're probably going to be hospitalized, and when they're hospitalized, they'll be tested and sometimes put on respirators and put in containment areas. Um, if not, they, what we do is we have a door, a back door. We meet them and bring them in the back door. We have our own containment room now. Okay. And our doctors, you suit up and the patient is also given a mask as they come through. Um, nine times out of 10, it is, they don't fit the, the uh, uh, virus at all, and doctors That's listening good. to their lungs and reassuring them that yes, you are sick and you have a bad cold, or this is your allergies kicking up. But no, this this does not require testing. Okay. Um, and I would say that's the majority of okay. what we're dealing with. With regard of testing, uh, what is the test, and how long would an individual have to wait for the results of their test? Okay, well, the test itself only takes about eight hours. Okay. But then there's transport. Uh, for private labs, they tend to have a central uh, testing area, so they have to ship it to the area, mm -hmm. then test. So it could take up to two to three days. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so should somebody be super worried during that two to three day period, or should they go to the doctors if it, it progresses? Oh, definitely go to the doctor if it progresses. Okay. If you start having symptoms of difficulty breathing, um, pressure or pain in the chest that won't go away. Uh, so the, the major symptoms that when you want to go to the doctor are uh, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, uh, altered mental status, which is when you uh, suddenly get confused or uh, are hard to arouse. So like if you're sleepy, um, Blue fingernails, uh, lips, or face, which okay. means you're not getting enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, pain in your chest. So pain and pressure in your chest, which probably means that you have pneumonia and you're not getting enough oxygen that way either. So any of those, call the emergency room or call 911. Always call before you go anywhere because you don't you want them to expect you. Right. Uh, so what have both of you heard in the community about like, let's say fears or maybe misinformation uh, in the Yavapai County? There's, there's quite a bit of fear. I've, I've had way more rumored cases than I've had real cases. Okay. Um, I've had about 20 rumored cases when we were still at zero. So I'm more than the entire state as it is. And so the best thing to do for that is go to uh, the state website, which is azhealth.gov. Um, and go to their COVID site and it tells the most up-to-date information of what uh, counties have cases and how many. Okay. And you can also visit uh, yevapai.us, uh, CHS, which is Community Health Services, and we'll have community information. Mm -hmm. okay. And we'll announce, we'll announce when we get our first case. Mm -hmm. So that's, right. that's given. So if we haven't announced it, it's probably rumor. Okay, cool. Uh, what about you, Jerry? What have you uh, I think heard? We have uh, patients that are concerned because th they're vulnerable, um, you know, especially our patients that um, have a compromised immune system. Um, you know, just asking what they should be doing. And uh, we've had some people that um, called about women that are pregnant, and we actually put those in the category of high risk people and okay. to actually to for them to be you know really strict about hand washing and uh, you know staying out of public areas and things like that because we don't know neonatally or, uh, actually how it's affecting um, and you know we don't want to find out the hard way um, mm -hmm. you know we're getting information from China but it's mixed so um, you know I, I say to people frequently um, you know, think positive, but prepare for the worst. And uh, a lot of our patients are calling with what I call um, feeling like it's a, a bother or a nuisance uh, to have to do these things. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not for war, war analogies by any means. I've been a peace and justice activist most of my life, but I can't help but think about my mother, who, who was an Air Force nurse in London, and... Uh, living through the blitz and uh, rationing and living with dark shades and going into bomb shelters. And, you know, what what people are complaining about is toilet paper and having to stay home and their gym being closed. And right. those are nuisances. They are a nuisance. It makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand that. And it does cause fear. But... Um, but we're Americans, and we're going to do what the do the right thing is, and we're going to fight this virus together, and uh, we're not going to whine about it. <laughs> Good. I, I don't. I don't want that. I mean, uh, I still can't comprehend why people are going out and just stocking up on toilet paper, <laughs> hand sanitizer. I can see, mm -hmm. uh, but toilet paper. It's like I, I just don't get that, you know. And uh, for me, with my generation, this could be like the first real issue that young people, millennials, yes. have to face. You know, yes. I saw some of the memes. It's like my grandparents fought in World War II. All we're asking for you to do is sit on the couch and watch Netflix. You know, and <laughs> yeah. that's kind of true. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> well, that's why they're called the greatest generation. I don't know if we're going to be ever called the greatest generation, <laughs> but in fact, you know. And I think around the world, it's kind of a chuckle that, you know, Americans think of, you know, covering their butts first. I mean, it's just kind right. of funny. But um, you, I believe it's it's one of those reactions. When you see an empty shelf, you mm -hmm. go into this panic and you want to you want to buy it, whatever it is. So right. some of that is kind of a social phenomenon, I mm -hmm. think. I, I can see that, too. And, um, you know... What about people's anxiety and fear? Does that play into like like impacting their health? Oh, definitely. Oh, most definitely, yes. Okay. We always wanted to watch out because either people will panic and start buying up toilet paper or they'll just not think of it at all and just carry on. You know, it's just like those people in hurricanes. Yeah. Right. You know, you'll see them walking around in hurricanes and then you hear that you know, 92 people died. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you don't want to let fear get to you, but you want to be concerned. You want to be uh, prepared Make sure you understand what's going on. You want situational awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay. But staying calm is the best thing you can do. 
Okay. So mainly just say, stay calm, wash your hands. Okay. Uh, the administration, I think, is leaning towards uh, a 15 day shutdown uh, for businesses. Uh, so what would be the positive effects of just shutting down a country for like 15 days and we have to be in quarantine? Like how could that combat the virus from spreading? Well, if in 14 days, that's uh, the maximum length uh, they think that the virus incubates. So when a person gets infected, it, uh, it can take up to 14 days before they show symptoms. And if they go to 15 days, they were considered uh, they didn't have the disease at all or perhaps didn't have the uh, symptoms. They were positive but didn't show any symptoms. So if they stay quarantined during that period, they can't infect others. So by doing a 15-day quarantine for everybody, that should lower the numbers considerably. We'll still get spread because you know, they're infecting the people around them in quarantine, you know, like mm -hmm. family and such, but it'll, uh, it'll suppress the numbers uh, of that's floating around in the wild. Mm. Okay, and so with a timeline, I know this is very unpredictable, but uh, even though they're estimating that the number will go down, what's the possibility that this, this virus will be around for let's say next uh, flu season or the season after that? Oh, I don't make predictions like okay. that. I've, I've been disappointed too many times. Um, it could, it's a totally new virus. Right. It's not a flu virus. So uh, with a, if this was a flu pandemic, we would expect it to act like the flu and go away in the summer because uh, flu virus is like cold and dry. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is a coronavirus, we don't really know a lot about it. So it, it might, hot weather might not bother it. Okay. So it's really gonna, um, we really don't know. Yeah. That's the truth. And as far, if, as far as stress, we do have people calling stressed out. And we um, there's a lot of uh, sites that one of the women put together that um, is free. And there's going to be more free opera, free uh, right. shows, free access to things that they normally wouldn't have access to. Um, you know, de deep breaths, some meditation, shutting all the news off. Um, you know, doing some things that you normally don't have a chance to do, anything that can take your mind off, the, off of this and, um, and be proud of yourself that you're doing all you can do. Right. Uh, well, thank you for both of you for coming onto our podcast uh, mm -hmm. on sh short notice. Before we log off though, um, I wanna give an opportunity for you to uh, share information about your organizations where people can come reach out to both of you or your organizations if they are panicking or fear that they do have the virus. Mm. Okay. Again, um, we'll be happy to talk to anyone um, on the phone that's concerned. Um, you know, our doctors are communicable disease specialists. You know, in some ways we have a jump on everything because we're used to dealing with communicable diseases. Um, and people with HIV years ago were very susceptible to those. Uh, so we're... Uh, you know, head of the the average healthcare worker. Um, but in fact, our services are specifically for people um, that have the virus. So okay. no, you won't be given an appointment and no, we can't test you, but we can give you, uh, uh, if you don't have a doctor, there are urgy centers that are doing the same thing we are. Um, so don't think that, you know, uh, you know, because you're not HIV positive, you can't get tested. Uh, there are other healthcare providers definitely stepping up, ordering the tests through a lab and taking the same precautions we are um, to make sure that other patients don't come in contact with anybody that is showing any kind of symptoms. Um, and yes, and um, I'm sure there they're taking precautions and they're washing their hands and they're um, staying away from people that look like they're sick. And that's very important. Um, and if you're sick, stay home. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yes. Very. <laughs> and mainly all the thing I can add is just don't panic. This is not the apocalypse. It's, it's serious. We're gonna know people who have died, who've gotten really sick. Yeah. But if we're careful, really practice social distancing, uh, and just keep basic hygiene, that'll keep those numbers down. Well, I just want to say thank you, Jerry and Stephen, for being our uh, guests tonight our for pleasure. a very pleasure. special yeah. coronavirus podcast for yes. the Five Senses. Well, thank you. Um, if you want more information for Northland Cares or Yavapai County Health Department, the 
links will be listed below and in our description at, on our page. Uh, for more information and more podcasts, please go to 5 com. And folks at home, stay safe, stay smart, stay healthy, wash your hands, and stay quarantined.